you got people from around the world that come here, right? Yes, we do. All, all over the place. Meet 65-year-old Hank Van Stedham. I just love the effects we have on these cars. He's here to talk about retiring retirement. And then to hear and, and see the people get on them for a ride around our tracks here. He was a welder and fabricator. And all the skills he acquired throughout his life are coming in pretty handy as he restores historic trains at the National Railroad Museum in Green Bay, the greatest town in the world. They just, they're in awe at what we can do and what we have done. His favorite project so far, restoring Eisenhower's World War II command train. We'll hear about the challenges of the Eisenhower and more. So pull up a seat and learn more about Hank's fascinating dream job. Some people make it sound like they just had this linear track or they knew exactly where they were going. So right. now you're looking for other opportunities. You don't want to just be on the couch, right? Right. So talk a little bit about how that process started and how you ended up here at the National Railroad Museum. Well, a lot of the, a lot of the fabricating shops I worked at and stuff, they, they, you're timed on how much uh, time you could put into that part, you know, to, for them to make money. And, and that's always a very difficult side of it. So then I seen the, uh, advertisement for this job and, and on the internet. So I fill out, or fill out a resume and brought it down here. And Were you a big uh, train enthusiast at that time? Never, never one bit, not at all. Right. No. And then, but when you get here, all of a sudden it opens up a whole nother world for you, right? Correct. Yeah, the only train I rode on was from, uh, from Detroit, Michigan to uh, Great Lakes uh, boot camp. That's the first time I was on a train and the last time was <laughs> up until this. I mean, you've got a lot of stuff going on here, more than just welding, woodworking, oh, yeah. um, helping out with engines, even though you're not the engine expert, right? Right. It's taking something that's been neglected for how many years, a lot, a lot of stuff has, and, and making it new again, and then seeing what that, what that does to that is, is amazing. And so then you become a little bit of a historian, don't you? Correct. Because yep. you can't just say, I'm just going to put this on here or that on here or paint this or put this metal or whatever. So what are some of the experiences like that where you've had to actually go back and study or talk with different uh, the curators here and stuff to find out what really what was this so you can make it look authentic to that time? Well, a lot of that was uh, the paint schemes because we tried to match that as close as possible for that era, you know, and, and like a lot of the things, a couple of the engines we or cars we worked on was in 1900s, you know, or 1920, and so that's pretty old. And, <laughs> Older and, than me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> And so, yeah, and it's, it's a labor of love, it really is. And, and a lot of the cars that came from, you know, different railroads and stuff like that, they had their own paint scheme, so we had to try to match that according to that, that railroad right. at that time. And, and I have a lot of people here that are willing to help us out, you know, as far as the way it should look and what you need to do to it. Tell us about Eisenhower and the work and your experiences with that train. Yeah, that was the first uh, car that I worked on. Um, when I started here, really? and it was a complete restoration inside and out, where we took everything out of every room, and you had to bag and tag everything to you, so you knew where it came from, and and that was that was it was awesome because I was standing in the in the front part of the train, which is like a meeting room or so with chairs and everything in there, and a, a guest from the uh, to the museum walked in and and looked around. He says. Isn't this amazing? You're standing in the same place where Eisenhower and Churchill might have been, you know, and I, yeah. I you know, and it's just, it's just, it's wonderful. It's, it's a good feeling. That train was part of saving the world. Right. For freedom. Right. Even though you, you categorize and knew where parts came from, putting it back together and making it authentic, what were some of the challenges there? Well, some of the um, woodwork in the car were, were in rough shape and from being in the weather and such. and. And as I'm varnishing it and restoring, trying to get it back to the luster it had, uh, a gentleman came up to me and said, that's all teak. The whole car is, the wood in there is, is teak and that's beautiful wood. And, and clean it all up and make it look good again. It, it, it was fun. What is some of the history that you know about the Eisenhower and with Ike himself? Well, I know that I've seen documentaries on TV and watched it that they had to um, armor plate the car that he was um, living in or staying in. It's wartime. Exactly, and so we tried to replicate that here as close as possible. That's why 
And if you see it, one car is covered in steel and the second car is not. World War II, 1944, um, World War. And yep. they're traveling in areas of conflict trying to help free people, uh, freedom for the world, and now it's here. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I seen that car and I was in awe when I first seen that engine come back. And it's just amazing. Were there certain things you got into that you said, boy, I don't know if I can do this? Yeah, then I had the benefit of, of everybody around me, the mm -hmm. curator here and, and my coworker, that I could ask those kind of questions and right. say, what do you, you know, how do you want this to end up? And, were there other things that, uh, other trains or other memories that you have that uh, you'd like to talk about? Well, the dynamometer was one of the other cars we've done, and that car is basically, it's hooked to the uh, train behind the engine, and it tells those who own that how much gas or, or fuel they're using and, and things they could do to make it uh, more energy efficient to ship things on the train. And, and that, was, that was a lot of fun in that car, too, because it was a big, uh, device and this, tell them all this information, graphs and charts and such. So is that some type, of, it's obviously electronics or something, right? Well, it was all pinned and, and the, oh, really? one, of the knuck, one of the couplers on the end is hooked to this machine and that machine from that weight that it pulls is telling that graph what to print out. And then the people running it had to get, learn how to read that and adjust it? Um, they had a crew that pretty much lived on that train. They had wow. a kitchen area, they had a bunk area, a bunk to sleep in. And so then you being, not having all that experience, that must have taken quite a while to figure out how this all worked and how to run it more efficiently? Yep, yeah, it was really kind of to the point where, I, well, I can't figure this out because it, you know, we can't test anything. So I just I try to put it back as close as we could off of pictures and, mm. and manuals and such that we had. Either too, sometimes some of the different uh, stuff nowadays wasn't used back in certain times. I've heard. Oh sure, yep. A lot of the they didn't have a Phelps screwhead back in them days. They had just a straight screwdriver, and that was it. Right. And to try to find those straight screwdrivers or, or screws are is a challenge. Right. So here we are with your 50 Ford story, and we've been hearing about your 50 Ford story, and people uh, are getting uh, close to retirement, and then. Uh, the encore of their life, the best years I really do believe are ahead of me. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the experiences and the uh, thoughts you can provide to others that are heading in the same direction now? And Well, it's, I constantly hear from friends always that, you know, what do I do with myself now? Now that I, I don't go to work at 9 to 5 every day and, mm -hmm. and I sit home and watch TV or so, you know, and this is fantastic. I, I spend half a day here every uh, whenever they need me or or such and it it's just a lot of fun and that's why I start encouraging people just don't wait till that day and stop right. start experiment with stuff start exactly. volunteering maybe try something because again you didn't have your resume didn't say welder National Museum train right. museum <laughs> right but you said hey I got some skill sets and I want to take on a new challenge or a new idea right mm -hmm. yeah it's something new it's always something new and learning more and and that's what it's all about.